I'm starting to get a little grasp on the transfer window now. Look back to last window, look at the window before. I'll be doing transfer updates all the time. You know, video after video, transfer news, transfer news, transfer gossip. I've just not done many. I don't think I've even done 10 in this window, which, which really says something. Because I'll be perfectly honest with you. Be perfectly honest with you. It's um, it's an easy video to do, a YouTube video to do. You know, it'll generally people will generally be interested in it. You'll get good interaction on the conversations, and uh, there's a sort of feel good factor about the transfer window itself. I've not really had it this time, and I've sort of even though it's it's an easy video to do, I've sort of chosen by and large not to do it. I think largely because I'm a bit tired of it really, and it's not the transfer window itself. I, I quite like that. Um, it's not the links with players. I understand. I always have done that West Ham and every club will be linked with a bunch of players who we were not going to buy. But that's all right. I quite like the fun of it. I, I quite like that. I think what it's done is it's sort of almost sucked the life and sucked the fun out of it for me. It's sucked the spirit out of me in this in this last little one because because of the way we're doing business. Now, look, if we get the deals over the line, just like we did in the summer and the time before, then absolutely fine. Let's be fair, it's not about me, it's not about doing videos, it's about West Ham getting the best players for the club. And if their strategy proves to be successful, who am I to argue? If the team carry on doing well, and we have done well, we're in a really good position in the league, really good position in Europe, then who am I, who am I to argue? Uh, and I think a lot of my frustration is based on what might happen rather than what has. So we might get lots of injuries and drop out the top 10. We might get lots of injuries and not compete in the Cups. We might not have enough squad depth to compete in Europe. They're all things that, that haven't really happened, but I, I suspect they might, and I'm sure a lot of you are the same. So the frustration is born out of um, an imagined scenario, if you like. That being said, I found it awfully frustrating. So what I've had to do is I've looked at a lot of the transfer rumours with a pinch of salt, if you like. Um cynicism, scepticism, call, call it what you will. So now we get to this Rafinha one, and it is it is an interesting one. Now, let me just put this out there now. I believe it. This one I believe. I do believe we are interested in this player. Um, starting to get a little grasp on how we're doing business and how the leaks come about. And we'll go back to last summer and go. we'll go back to Kurt Zuma and we'll go back to Ariola. That was being talked about for a good month, six weeks before they actually happened, for different reasons. Look, I think Sullivan and I think Moyes don't want the news coming out. They've, they've shut down any sort of leaks this end. It all comes from the other the other one, which is why you get people like that, Fabrizio Romano, basically break, breaking the news. Um, the, the Zuma one was slightly different. I think it was agent-led, but then Chelsea were quite happy to have it out there, and that was to let everybody know that the price was £25 million and they weren't shifting from it. Don't blame them for doing that, actually. You know, it's absolutely fine. They're the selling club. It's their player. If they want to let it be known, it's £25 million. Fine. And you know what? They got it in the end, didn't they? They, they basically stood their ground, and in the end, we caved in, and we ended up paying it. The uh, Areola was slightly different because PSG don't seem to care who they tell about anything, really. I guess, I guess when you're that wealthy, it just doesn't matter, really, does it? When you can pay people whatever. There's no need, really, to keep any, anyone a secret. You might just say, yeah, actually, we'll have him, and we'll sell him, and we'll have him, and we'll sell him. Um... So they were quite happy to be out, let it be known that West Ham were interested in their, what was, I guess, their, their third choice goalkeeper. So when I see deals this time, I, I, I look at them and I think, oh, there might be something in there. And I think the Teletazar one, who is the um, the big, massive centre half from Marseille, I think, OK, OK, I, I, I think there might be something in this. I wouldn't be at all surprised if on transfer deadline day, we sign him as our centre half. Wouldn't be surprised at all. The one thing I'm sort of struggling with on that is the the allure or the benefit that it has for Marseille, which is basically a loan deal. That being said, um, a loan deal for some players might uh, might be quite attractive to some clubs if they're on big wages. I still don't think we've seen a massive fallout from uh, from COVID yet. There's a lot of clubs. Premier League clubs are rich. We've got the best TV deal in the world, the Premier League does. Premier League... Can Premier League, Premier League clubs can probably offset 30, 40 million pound loss they might have had. It's interesting they stay in the league. They know it's coming. They can borrow against it. They can, they can get through. Um, other clubs on the continent, a lot of Italian teams, a lot of French teams, uh, some German teams, not so much. I think it's more difficult, really, um, for them, and they might have lost those revenue streams. So uh, possibly getting 
a loan fee of four or five million pounds for a player and getting three million pounds off your wage bill might actually um, be something that's that's quite advantageous and quite prudent for them to do. So, uh, so let's are whilst it might, I don't I can't see the the allure and the attraction for Marseille. I, I think that happens. That's got the whiff of something. But I want to get into um, the the rumor on Rafinha. Because this one is a bit of a weird one, but I do believe it. Before I go any further, this video is sponsored by the One Football app. You can download the One Football app by clicking the link below, literally under this screen. Click it or use that QR code that I will superimpose up there. The One Football app is the one stop shop for all your footballing needs. For basically you, your, all your team news, whoever you support, sign up to the app, it's free. Click I support West Ham, but it's all the news from all the websites, all the newspapers into one place, so you don't have to go searching for it. It's the One Football app. Downloadable in the link below. So the Rafina news has come out. And uh, basically, that is that West Ham have bid £50 million. Rafina, the, the wide player uh, for Leeds United, who causes us all manner of problems. Great player, Brazilian player, really, really good. Uh, left of field? Uh, sorry, I don't mean where he plays. It's actually more right of field. But um, it is, I mean, the story sort of came left of field. And, and there are easier stories to make up. This, I, I get the suspicion this hasn't got a made-up one. This hasn't got a made-up feel about it. The more I look at it, I thought, oh, yeah, he would be attractive to Moyes. Forget that he's a winger. Moyes will turn him into a forward. He'll, he'll play wide and play as a forward. This will be the next Antonio or the next Anatovic. That's what it would be. Perhaps Moyes cannot find value, particularly good value, in searching for a bona fide striker. And as we know with David Moyes, if he doesn't find a bona fide striker, he'll create one from a different position. So it would not surprise me. I don't read anything into the fact that this guy plays in the same position as Jared Bowen. Um... And I like it. I would like to sign this player. Two things. Okay, firstly, if this is the guy, all right, if this is the guy that, that we've rumoured to, to have bid £50 million pound for, this was first suggested three or four days ago, by the way, then if this is the guy, why has it taken this long? And I know I don't want to get, get back into this because this is really... Every time I try and do a video in, in this transfer window, it basically boils down to the same thing. Why are we... Why are we taking so long? Why haven't we done it early? And basically every video becomes like another and it just becomes a generic transfer window video. Um, which is why I've not done too many of them. Um, you know, you can you sometimes get off the get off the point, you know, which I made did a, to give an example, did a video the other day which was about the ten players that will need replacing next season. It very much became about this window. Why haven't we done anything yet? Um, you know, so it's it's easy just to, to look at that. So that's the first one. But without going over old ground. If we've identified him and he's the guy, why are we waiting this long? Anyway, yeah, I'm sure you, you all agree. I'm sure you all agree, and you all share my frustrations with that. Uh, secondly, I go back to what I said about Marseille. Where's the where's the benefit to Leeds here? I, I don't understand this, and this is what worries me about the leaving it late. If you were to have, if you were to ask me, you can ask me if you want. If you were to ask me, say, Gonzo, do you think Leeds would sell Rafinha to West Ham? I'd say no. I su I suspect not. Do I believe we want him? Yes. Do I believe David, David Moyes type player? Absolutely, I do believe that. But I don't believe that either the Leeds hierarchy or Bielsa himself would want to sign uh, sell Rafinha. I just don't. Why would they? He's integral to to them staying up. I really, do, I really do think he is. I don't just don't see the benefit of, of them. Okay, so if that's the case, bear in mind I think that Leeds would probably say no. Why did we not do it at the start of the window and get the no then? So as then we can concentrate on somebody else. I mean, I'll be delighted. I'm telling you, I'll be, I'll be singing and dancing. If it comes to transfer deadline day and we've signed this player, uh, I, I, I'll be, I would be delighted. Only one thing bothers me about, only one thing concerns me about transfer windows. Has it made the squad better? That's, that's that my only question I, I ask. And, and if it turned out that come the end of the transfer window, we had got Celeste Zara and we got Rafinha, then it would be an unequivocal yes. West Ham are better as a result. Would I like the way we've gone about our business? No, not particularly. It's it's, it's been a frustrating and, and horrible uh, transfer window, quite frankly. But I would think that is business well done. However, to get this deal over the line has got to be really, really difficult. And the one thing I think that I do look at and believe that this is a concern is that we understand that the player was was what was on the radar of Barcelona. Now, I guess that's off. That's not going to happen now because Traore has gone over there. And realistically, they operate in a similar uh, area of the pitch, really, don't they? So Traore is going back to Barcelona, which means they're going to end their their interest in Rafinha. Um, but is he going to agitate for a move? And I, and I hope that's not something that West Ham are, are banking on. 
that we might that he might kick off because you've got to be careful what you wish for there because what you don't want is Rafinha going into Leeds and saying I want to go to West Ham sell me now or I'm not going into training and all the rest of it because then you you're probably not getting a character that you you want you might well find yourself a year down the line with another Anatovic situation or you could call it a Rafinha situation so I, I don't want that to happen. I don't think it should happen. I think if you do, you've, you've chosen the wrong character. I don't believe we all talk about the Moyes, David Moyes MOT. Character is a massive part of that. And I'm, I'm not... I'm, I wouldn't be thrilled at the prospect of that happening. So really, you're, you're reliant on, on the two clubs coming to an accord, which is West Ham bidding an amount that Leeds would accept. And I, I just can't get my head around why Leeds would accept £50 million for one of their best players. Don't get me wrong, I don't think West Ham should then go and bid £70 million for him because it's just not the sort of money that West Ham have. You know, if we, if West Ham are going to go and bid a, above anything they paid for Halaire, which was, what, £43 million, something like that, I think, you know, I'll think, well done. Well done for going and bidding that money. You, you cannot argue with a club record transfer, really. Um, but in terms of value to West Ham, well, that's realistically, West Ham should be able to get a couple of players for £70, £75 million. Um, and we're going to need a couple of players, let's be perfectly honest. So I don't think we should get into a bidding war. If what we can afford is 50 off to 50, fine. I understand why we would bid that amount. We wouldn't want to go any higher than that, really. But I understand, would understand Leeds saying no. Not because there can be a bidding war or, or anything like it. Why would there be? But because Leeds, 50 million is, is nothing compared to... Well, compared to another season in the Premier League, plus the two or three parachute payments. What is it? Three parachute payments after that. Basically, about 180 to 200 million for another season in the Premier League, plus three parachute payments of 50 million. You know, in, in essence, I'll try to be calculations there, you're looking at about 350 million. Well, 50 million, you might as well just keep it. I mean, this is the same argument you got with Tarkowski or, or whatever the case may be. Um, sometimes just better to keep a player. I would love it to happen, um, but I, I can't. It's very hard um, to do a transfer window video, as, 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 I, as I mentioned before, which is easy. They're easy videos to do a transfer window one, but it's hard to get excited about it because of the nature of, of, of what's happened. So hopefully I'm, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully the, the rumour is right. We are interested in this player. Hopefully I'm wrong. I suspect we won't get him. Love to think we would. Um, it's, it's just hard. <coughs> Excuse me. It's getting all emotional. Yeah. Um, it's just hard, isn't it, at the moment to to really think that and believe that West Ham are going to do any business. I think we will. Um, obviously, we're going to have to do a transfer deadline day show uh, anyway um, here, so that that should be hopefully that something will be will be happening. But I've, I've got to be honest with you, so I'm not not buying me um, me yellow tie and, and getting ready to you know be be waiting by the by the camera or by the internet all day ready to do videos all the way through the day because we're signing players. I just don't think it's going to happen. We'll do a little transfer window show in the evening get some guests on and uh and hope something happens you know really hope something happens hope it will um sorry what can i say well i'd like to be a little bit more upbeat than this but it's it's been a little bit crap and i like to think have faith in moise I, I do do i have faith in moise that it'll continue will continue to be that he's stopped us being a relegation team and will continue to operate in the top 10 i have absolute faith in david Moyes in that i, I really do do I have faith in David Moyes and the board getting a player in on transfer before a couple of players in before transfer deadline? I'm trying, I'm trying, um, but I don't quite believe it. I need to see it first.